Greetings from team two. We discussed midterm trends in higher education tech adoption, specifically the proliferation of open educational resources and a rise of new forms of interdisciplinary studies. We looked at difficult challenges impeding higher ed tech adoption, where the challenges are understood, but the solutions elusive, specifically adapting organizational designs of higher education to the future of work and advancing digital equity. Finally, we talked about important developments that are two to three years out to adoption, adaptive learning technologies and artificial intelligence. Open educational resources, OER. The Hewlett Foundation defines OER as high quality teaching, learning and research materials that are free for people everywhere to use and repurpose. OER became an issue on the world stage, on the world political stage, when OER was linked to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which states everyone has a right to education. Our team focused on how OER policy has impacted sharply, sharply excuse me, the, the tradition of assigning and buying textbooks. The Horizon Report noted that textbook prices rose 82% from 2002 to 2012, and that the majority of students, nearly 65%, simply stopped buying them because they couldn't afford them. The Horizon Report mentioned a trend in programs with zero textbook cost, as well as linking tenure for educators to, um, who develop OERs for their courses and programs. Finally, given the connection of OER to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we questioned why only resources and textbooks were, were under the microscope and why higher education itself is still financially prohibitive. Another category of the midterm trends for higher education and new technology is the rise of new forms of interdisciplinary studies. Interdisciplinary studies is a new category for the Horizon Reports as it hasn't been included in previous years. Multidisciplinary approaches in education and higher education are being driven by a combination of factors. First, schools are seeing interdisciplinary degrees as a viable alternative to traditional single degrees. And secondly, there's an existential crisis facing singular specialized degrees. People are not signing up for subjects such as the humanities and history, yet these are still very important subject areas. One of the driving forces behind multidisciplinary degrees being viable is the fact that technology is, as stated in the 2018 Horizon Report, breaking new ground with data structures, visualizations, geospatial applications, and innovative use of open source tools. There is an additional benefit to multidisciplinary degrees in that it encourages greater collaboration among staff from different fields. And it is speculated that interdisciplinary studies could potentially solve many complex problems, including emergent issues on the fringe of science, maths, and fine arts and humanities. In closing, it's worth noting that multidisciplinary lessons have been occurring in K-12 for a while, and this nicely lines pedagogical practices up between primary, secondary, and tertiary education. Uh, one difficult challenge we looked at was adapting organizational designs to the future of work with respect to higher education. By aligning with the demands of the 21st century workplace, Organizations are looking to meet learners' needs for interdisciplinary studies, lifelong learning, and shorter paths to completion, including flexible degree pathways and other alternatives, such as micro-credentialing. However, organizational changes have had an impact on faculty. The Horizon Report indicated that in 1969, 80% of faculty were tenured. Today, about two-thirds of faculty members are non-tenured, with half of the faculty members now working only part-time and taking on more than one position with several institutions. About 31% of these part-time faculty members are living at or below the federal poverty line and are pressuring institutions to provide benefits and job security. Changing organizational designs are also impacting students and institutions are undergoing a digital transformation to better meet the students' needs of services such as financial aid, 
academic advising and work study programs by leveraging technology and data. One solution to changing organizational design is to include effective leadership structures where staff, faculty, and leadership each have a voice in decision making in order to be more responsive to students and other stakeholders' needs. According to the Horizon Report, advancing digital equity remains a difficult challenge. Digital equity refers to equal access to technology. Although broadband infrastructure has become more readily available, residential adoption is still a concern. And internet access is still not evenly distributed worldwide. Massive online courses are providing low-income areas with educational opportunities. Therefore, high-speed internet is crucial. Still, solutions are elusive. Students must be able to access content on all devices, and sometimes content isn't always mobile-friendly. There also remain disenfranchised groups, such as incarcerated individuals, who may not have access to the internet and therefore are prohibited from receiving an online education, which could actually help reduce recidivism. Digital fluency is also a concern. Even if the technology is available, it's worthless if we don't know how to use it effectively. Therefore, teachers must be trained to use the tools and technology. Digital equity is advancing in higher education as schools launch pilots and programs to address some of the issues and to bring awareness to the importance of digital equity. Our first two to three year development was adaptive learning technologies, which refers to technologies that monitor student progress and use data to modify instruction at any time. These technologies dynamically adjust to the level or type of course content based on an individual's abilities or skill attainment in ways that accelerate a learner's performance with both automated and instructor interventions. The continued development of such technologies provide more opportunities for real-time, actionable feedback rather than traditional course structures which at times give learners feedback when it is too late to address issues in their work. This helps educators identify learners who may be slipping or falling behind early enough to do something about it. It also gives learners more tools to monitor their own progress. As a group, we thought the two to three year time horizon for adaptive learning technologies was a bit ambitious. While adaptive learning platforms continue to pop up, they may pigeonhole teachers by forcing them to work within one platform or to make use of just that one technology. We considered that great teachers tend to use a variety of materials and resources based on the learners in front of them, and as such would like to see advancements in adaptive learning technologies connecting with one another and sharing data so that they can better monitor progress across multiple platforms. Another area of important development in technology is artificial intelligence, AI. It has great potential for helping schools analyze student data and performance as well as it being an academic field of study. This has been on the Horizon Reports list for two years. AI has the capacity to change online learning by supporting the use of individualized learning pathways, and AI is already impacting the decision-making process of healthcare, the financial market, and it stands to even have an impact on the legal system. Having experience and knowledge of AI is seen as a skill set that will give graduating students a competitive advantage in the job market. In education, AI is being used to facilitate the evaluation of and even provide feedback on student work. In addition to schools such as the University of Texas at Austin using AI to evaluate traffic patterns as a way of addressing high traffic burdens, schools such as Georgia State are using an AI chatbot to help new students through the induction process. There are also initiatives such as the Carnegie Learning and OpenStax partnership that use AI to teach math. And while AI has great potential, there are some cautionary warnings being shared, particularly in what is called gray areas. These are areas where AI is being asked to make decisions that are not fact-based, but instead are based on a holistic collection of factors that do not always have a clean solution. It is safe to say that AI will be here in greater amounts over the coming years. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this interesting and informative.